put the big base mill. I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna cut the big rectangle. I'm gonna cut that island. Well, I'm doing it as a, and I'll show you why I did that first. So that's this is kind of what we want to end up with. That I change tools and I'm I'm, call, I'm doing something called ramp milling to rough out the middle of the slot and then going to go back in and contour cut that slot. So you're going to program this part using cut a comp. You're going to put in the uh, tool size in the compensation table in the tool geometry table on your machine. And you're going to use all print dimensions on this. The easiest way to program G code. All right. I'm pre drilling all, I spot drilled all the holes with the 90 degree spot drill. I'm pre drilling all those holes and I'm going to follow up with the actual drill size because the drill will drill better. That'll be first side done deburr it and we're going to flip it over and do the bottom and mill that up. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to move some operations around because I want to show you uh, something. Okay. Let's go step by step here. Okay. Move this out of the way. So, if we're on the top over here, right? You, this is where you need to start your face mill. On either side would work. If you get an open machine, the chips will shoot at you if you're doing left or right. Uh, you need to be clear. So, when you go to do your position move, just figure out the radius of the tool, add a little extra. And bring it down and we're going to cut z zero so you're going to create z zero we're going to make this so we don't have to do any additional math to make the part come out per print all right so we're going to do a i'm going to go step by step here and zoom up a little bit i'm going to bring it down to the z zero position and start cutting across and then get out of town and go home get another tool now we got our uh, bigger end mill. I like using a half inch three fluter. And you have to come down clear of the material. That's going to be your entry point. So you're going to wrap it to there. Then you're going to feed to the depth you want. And you want to make sure you are. So what are we talking about there? Let's uh, go transparent here. See the material there? We have enough that we can machine around this whole thing without cutting into this. You know, we got, we got some room. And you want to go past the bottom of this by five or ten thousandths. I like using ten. Okay. So we're going to go. Now, the, the big thing a lot of people have to learn is how do you turn, how do you use cut a comp? You got to have an entry move. To compensate to turn on the, to tell the machine what size tool it is and then you have to turn cut a comp off or uncompensate at the end and that needs to be a move also that's the proper way of doing it all right so the next move this is going to be comp on feeding in against that wall then we're going to go line 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 and line we just made the whole rectangle and I'm going to pull away, uncompensate. I'm going to wrap it up to my clearance move. In this case, I use one inch. And am I done or am I not done? I know, I think I could do some more milling. All right, let's uh, do the island. All right, I'm going to wrap it to my stop position, wrap it to close to the top, and then feed to the depth I want. The depth of this land right there. Same thing. We're gonna we're gonna cut in our feed rate, and then cut a comp, and end up at that coordinate. So 
how to co-op on and climb milling direction is this direction right there that's line 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 arc line you got the view here and this one's gonna this is gonna take a big cut here over here this is like half the, uh, right there where that's a slot slotting is like the toughest thing for an end mill to do and this is like fully engaged there 180 degrees of engagement go around go around go around go around go around, go around, go around, go around. done what happened here? We ended up these islands on there. I'm gonna just shut off that stuck. Ooh. Now most people won't know this. You're a beginner, you wouldn't know this. But if this happens on your job, you're like, oh, how do I get rid of those? How do I know what those are? We used to call it eyeball engineering. Now I could probably guesstimate where that is. And then add in some more moves and just knock those off. And then I thought that maybe I can follow the outside of this with no compensation. Maybe that'll work. So right here, this is this wall is 250. And if I use a half inch end mill, and if I follow straight down this line, which would be the center of tool center of tools and that would actually line up perfect I could pre-cut that and then do the other material all right let's come back to that how do we do this what's what are we going to do the holes or the slot I'm going to do the slot I'm going to use a smaller end mill the slot I believe is 3 8 diameter or 1875 radius you could take the end mill and just go back and forth, back and forth, but the finish might not be optimal. In this case, you want to rough and finish. Now, you could do a pre-drill the hole method and then bring up the end mill and work your way around. You could do that, which means I would probably drill all the holes first and then do this last. But I'm going to use something called ramp milling. It's pretty very easy to write. I'm going to wrap it to that position, which is going to be in the center of this, this arc right there. I'm going to wrap it down. I'm going to feed down to depth. And I'm going to do zigzag moves. I'm going to go in the Y and Z direction. Y and Z, back and forth. All right, I did it a little bit high in the demonstration here, but here right now, right there. You notice it started to cut. And it's going down. This is actually a pretty good cut like that. Very, it's very easy on the tool. All right. So you got to do G ones doing Y and Z moves from this point to that point. Very easy. Zip, 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 and then get down to the bottom of the dimension. All right. Okay, now we're done. I would use the same end mill and go back in and contour this out at depth. So I need to enter and not run into this wall here. So I'm going to probably start in the middle again. Go to the wall, turn the compensation on, and go in this direction. You remember the end mill's turning this way. And if you're shooting the chips behind you, that's, that's climb milling. If you're shooting the chips in front of you, that's conventional milling and the finish won't be as good. With CNC machine, we're climb milling everything. All right, next move. So it's rapid to there, and then we're going to feed to the bottom. And then we're going to go comp on. Line, arc, line, arc. We're back to the start point again, and... I'm going to do a linear move back to the middle, G40, shut it off, and then wrap it out of there. Are we done? Yes. Let's go to the next tool. Okay, let's use a spot drill. We're going to spot drill these holes. 
I like to use the diameter of each hole. So this, if I did that, I would have to have a different Z for all of these. Now that can be done easily with your can cycles. You have an X and a Y, you just add a Z. So each one could be independent, even though the cycle is still the same. Or I would, the other method would be do it to the smallest drill. <laughs> and if you want to do hand uh, deburring afterwards. So we're going to spot drill all of these, G81 or G82 cycle. Okay. I'm going to do the pre-drill method because some of these are plus or minus 2. And the smallest drill is F. F is plus or minus 2. Hmm. So if I pre-drill these other holes, I'll know, I know I'll get better diameter, but the F drill, I better make sure that that is not running out at all. Or if I am unsuccessful with that, if I'm checking with the pin and they're coming out like 216, instead of you're allowed up to 215, then I probably should pre-drill these with a smaller drill. And then follow up with these four. Um, probably don't don't quite need a reamer. The plus or minus two is not quite in the reamer range if you're a thou or under. All right, let's go back to the demo. So I'm going to pre-drill all the holes. All right, this is going to be peck drilling. Everybody should know what that cycle is. And how much do you peck? Let me just hit play. All right. If I don't know what the peck, I put the Q at 0.1 and take it from there. It seems to work for pretty much everything. Um, you have to figure out your feed rates. You know, your, your chip load, some are in per revolution or some are in per tooth. And there's only two teeth on a drill. And if you're using like high speed drills, most of us are. You're going to have the point of the drill is 118 degrees. So two of these are through holes. So you're going to have to make sure the tip of the drill passes through the bottom and a little extra to make sure you get a full hole. The other ones you got to control the depth so you can pre-calculate that because they want they want the, the depth of the hole and they don't care how... Well, look at that. Uh, they don't care the uh, how much the drill point is. They don't really care if it's you know 90 degrees. So if you use 118 degrees, you should be able to mathematically figure that out. There are some good. Uh, the Haas has a little little book or some little uh, uh, quick calculations or uh, factors of how to do that. Um, I I've gotten in the habit of of cheating that uh, offset up on the on the two tools like that and I would go in and check it with a pin and check the depth of the hole and then I could just play with the offset to get it like dead dead on. All right let's go back one operation right here so this one I said I think I'm going to do that method where I'm going to do no compensation center of tool and I'm just going to go walk around the outside I would not plunge on this. I couldn't quite get it to not plunge. I'll figure that one out. I would start off the part, go to depth, feed to depth, and you'd go around. Notice it does not cut anything else other than the little tips that were there. All right. Then I started thinking, you know, maybe if I had put that operation. Let me shut this one off here. I'm going to move this operation to there. And I can use it like a roughing cycle because some of these, this over here is like a slide and that's going to cut a lot. All right. Let's simulate again. So I'm going to buzz by operation one, bink. Operation two, the big rectangle. Now I'm going to hit play. So I'm going to do the square box like this, and then do the island. So now it doesn't have to cut so hard. And the old ramp milling. 
Finish contour, spot drill, pre drill the holes. And that's it. So that should be coming out the sides. If you're using carbide end mills, this should be dead on. Uh, if you're using high speed end mills, there might be some tool deflection. So uh, I would probably just rerun the contours just to make sure um, they're coming out the sides. But using carbide that should be it should be within a, a thousandth or under even though prof i i have learned that i used to do all g code hand programming over the years i would add a rough and finish cycle there's actually a a good uh, demonstration in this book how to do that and that would be to take the same profile with the same or different tool with a different D number and you give and tell the tool it's a little bit bigger than it really is. So that would be a roughing profile. And that might end, end up doing another like boundary. So you can you can learn ways of how to do that if it came down. Like we had if you had three inch wide material, you're gonna have to figure out this is gonna be kind of a lot. You're gonna end up with big islands around the side, so okay. And that's about it. So uh, talk to you later, and hope good luck with your passes inspection. Okay, talk to you later.